What's up, YouTube? This is Big Mike. Uh, recently, Robert Ory made some comments uh, regarding uh, a comparison between Makeem Olajuwon and, and uh, Tim Duncan, excuse me, two players that he played with during his career. Um, he played with both of them while they both were in their prime years. So this is a fair assessment. Um, I think what really got a lot of people's attention was the fact that he said that he thought that Akeem Olajuwon was 20 times better than Tim Duncan. He said that Tim Duncan, Tim Duncan was a great player, he was an all-star, but he just thought that Akeem Olajuwon was on a, another level. I mean, he went into detail about it. I can't, I didn't memorize what he said, but uh, he went into detail about it. I think he said something about the work ethic, uh, just watching him play, watching the things he could do. It was just... You know, Tim's great, but he just said that a lot of runs on another level. Now, my take on it is, while I wouldn't say literally that I thought Akeem Olajuwon was 20 times better than Tim Duncan, because uh, that would be an insult to Tim Duncan, but there's no doubt about it that Akeem Olajuwon was, was a superior player, okay? Um, number one, offensively. Uh, even though they both had roughly the same field goal percentage, I think, for their careers, roughly the same. Might be about 51% or so um, for both guys. I think a lot of them might have a slightly higher field percentage. But generally speaking, though, despite that, a larger one had more range. He took a lot more jumpers. Uh, I think Tim Duncan's range generally went out to about what? Uh, 15, 16 feet, maybe, generally. Uh, not to say he hasn't taken jumpers outside of that range, but maybe 15, 16 feet. While well, Elijah Wan's range pretty much was just within the three-point line on in, you know. And uh, occasionally he would knock down some threes. So he had a, he was a better outside shooter than Tim Duncan. Uh, he was a, I mean, it's just a no-brainer. You don't have to think about it. He's a better post scorer. I think him, him and, and Kevin McHale are the greatest post scorers in NBA history. Um, offensively, just overall, he was a better offensive player, a better scorer. Uh, could score more in multiple ways. Had a plethora of moves. Uh, defensively, he was a defensive player in the year 1994. While Tim Duncan was a great defensive player, uh, he was the level of Akeem Olajuwon. Olajuwon, you know, was probably the premier uh, post-defender of his era. Uh, one of the most prolific shot blockers in NBA history. Uh, is the official leader as far as block shots leader in NBA history. Um, he was more athletic. <coughs> more explosive. I mean... And also just a more exciting player. Uh, one knock on, knocks on Tim Duncan was that while he was fundamentally sound, which is probably the one area that he has over Lodge One, uh, it could be a little boring to watch at times. Uh, I didn't find him boring, but, you know, that was one of the knocks on him. But you get to get the, the, the gist of what I'm trying to say, though. You know, he's just... Last one was just far superior basketball player than Tim Duncan. Uh, well, the superior player. I don't want to say far superior, but he's superior. Um, and also, there's this. Some people will tell you that Tim Duncan had the benefit of playing on teams that had talent. Uh, even when he first came into the league, you know, he paired up with Dale Robertson and and then, um, you know, he uh, would play with players like Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker and so. And um, for many years, people would tell you, would say, well, Tim Duncan makes these guys better. And I'm pretty sure he did. But you look at what the Spurs did this year and have the emergence of, the emergence of Kawhi Leonard. And many of these other guys, even though they're older, 
they were still playing at a high level. Uh, Tony Parker in the playoffs until he had the uh, season-ending injury. You have to wonder if some of those criticisms were justified. Not criticism, but uh, just certain things people point out. Well, you know, Tim Duncan had the benefit of playing on teams that had some talent. Akeem Olajuwon, maybe earlier on in his career, he had some uh, talent around him. Uh, but there was a period of time after Ralph Sampson uh, was traded with after his injuries in the late 80s into the 90s, Olajuwon didn't have the most talented cast around him. And by the time that Olajuwon really started having talent around him, uh, the mid to late 90s, he started falling off as a player. Because there's no doubt in my mind, if Olajuwon, Barkley, and Drexler had played with each other in 92, they would have won a championship that year. But by that time, Olajuwon was starting to decline slowly as a player. Drexler wasn't what he once was after the, after the knee injury. And Barkley, after the back issues and age and sub to weight gain wasn't the same guy. But anyway, that's my take on that. I think that, of course, you know, Tim Duncan is a certified first battle Hall of Famer, but Akeem Olajuwon is one of those guys man, you put up there with a Michael Jordan. In my opinion, he's up there with Michael Jordan, uh, Kendall Jabbar, Wilt Chamberlain, Bird, Magic, Bill Russell. He's up in that altitude. Well, Timmy is a little bit below that. But tell me what you guys think.